What is up guys? This is Dan from The New Travel and this is my bedroom and we're not talking about my bedroom today. We're talking about Mexico, which is where I've been living for the past five months. Uh, and I've been picking up a few tips about life here in Mexico, so I thought I'd make a video about 10 things you should know before moving to Mexico. So guys, tip number one, and this has to do with the shirt that I'm wearing. Mexico is big. I mean, actually, it's huge. I think sometimes we forget that because it's two neighbors to the north are even bigger, but Mexico is quite big as well. So I just want you guys to know, if you're planning a trip across Mexico, it's probably gonna take longer than you expected, and also, don't just go to the beach and say that you've seen Mexico, because there's a lot more to see. Now guys, point number two, let's talk about Mexican food. Now Mexican food is such a big topic, I could make a video just about 10 things to know about Mexican food. Um, in fact, that's not a bad idea. But yeah, Mexican food is not what you think. At least it's not what most people think. Um, I'm a Canadian and the version of Mexican food we get, I guess is kind of like Tex-Mex, which means that it's an Americanized version of Mexican food. So we eat a lot of nachos, we eat a lot of burritos. Uh, in fact, I've had way more burritos back home in Canada than I have in Mexico. And some of the most common foods like enchiladas con mole are things that I'd never heard of before. Things that we don't get in Canada. You probably don't get in the United States. Treat Mexican food with an open mind and treat it with respect. Don't come in thinking that it's all tacos and that's all you'll ever get. Though the tacos are very good, so definitely get some tacos. But also explore some new options because you will be, uh, you'll be blown away. Point number three, guys. Uh, this was a huge surprise for me, but the weather in Mexico can get cold. And I mean, I guess I was a bit naive with this one because I came from Canada and I saw how far south Mexico is. And I just thought, like, how cold can it really get? Well, as someone who arrived in Mexico City in December, I can tell you it gets freaking cold. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Dan, you're from Canada. The cold's not supposed to bother you, right? But the thing is, back home in Canada, uh, because we get so cold, we have proper heating systems wherever you go. So even when it's really cold outside, it's really warm inside. Whereas in Mexico, most things are open air, which means that when it's cold, you just can't escape the cold. You know, it's, it's a very short period that it gets really cold, so they don't need that same level of heating. But when it's cold, it gets cold. So uh, yeah, just think about that. Now guys, on to slightly more serious topic. Uh, I wanna talk about safety. This is probably the thing that gets talked about the most regarding Mexico, and it's usually in a very negative light. I mean, I, I know I experienced it when I first moved to Mexico. I had friends and family who were worried about my safety. But nearly all of the violence that's occurring is isolated within the people in the drug scene or living in the places most affected by the drug culture. So personally, I would highly recommend you not to be scared off by the safety warnings because I, I think, I think not only are they overblown, but they're only showing one side of the story. Myself and everyone else that I've met in Mexico, none of us have encountered these criminals that Fox News would have you think are, you know, waiting to kidnap you every day. It's just not true. I will say this, be careful if you ride the metro. Um, I made a whole video about this topic if you want to learn more, but to keep it short, I got pickpocketed on the metro, uh, another friend of mine got pickpocketed on the metro. Another Mexican friend of mine got pickpocketed on the metro. Uh, it's a serious problem. I'm not saying don't ride it. I'm just saying be very careful of your possessions when it's busy. Okay guys, number five. Let's talk about tap water. This is gonna be a very short answer. Don't drink it. Okay, I'll say this too. From what I understand, from some Mexicans. There's a bit of debate over this issue. Some people have said that the quality is getting much better than it was in the 90s, for example. Uh, some people saying it tastes bad, but it's actually not that unsafe to drink. Guys, I wouldn't risk it, especially if you're new to the country. Your immune system might not be used to things that the Mexicans are used to because you're coming from a different environment. Just don't do it. Now guys, I know that last one was a bit negative. Now I wanna balance it with something really positive. Number six, Pueblos Magicos. 
Pueblos Magicos means magical towns. And it's actually an initiative that was started by the Mexican government. Over a hundred towns that have been designated as Pueblos Magicos. And that means they meet a certain standard that makes them ideal for tourism. I've been to a couple so far. My favorite was Taxco, uh, which is in the state of Guerrero. I don't know how to explain it. It's just like you're getting transported back to a different time period. You know, you got the cobblestone streets, you got the old cars, you got the... It's just beautiful, guys. Number seven, speaking English. So guys, I'll admit it. English speakers were a bit spoiled. We're a bit um, arrogant, I guess, because we expect people anywhere we go to speak English. Try to learn some Spanish. I mean, I'm far from perfect on this one. I'm still saying, uh, you know, say I just know a little bit of Spanish is kind of my, my catchphrase in Mexico. But at least try to learn enough how to order your food, how to, you know, pleasantly say hello, goodbye, thank you, have a nice meal, buen provecho, you know, things like that. The little pleasantries and a smile can go a long way uh, if someone doesn't speak English. And don't expect them to. Like, don't, don't feel entitled to speak in your own language because you are in another country, you are in another culture. And while most people in the beach resort places like Cancun will probably speak English, in a city like Mexico City, where I'm living, it's, it's just a big city. People are just living their lives. They don't revolve around your tourism, so, like, you're not as important as you think you are. I guess it would be the message for that one. Number eight. Yeah. It, Mexicans are passionate. They're passionate about their food. They're passionate about their music. They're passionate about their culture and their history. I see it especially in my YouTube comments. Um, if I get a fact right about Mexican history, like people will be very passionate and like thankful in their responses. But there's another side, which is if I get something incorrect, Mexicans will be very passionate, um, passionately angry, I guess is the way to call it. <laughs> and that's not a diss guys, it's just like, it's just true. You guys are very proud people. And I think that passion connects to point number nine, uh, which is that if you want to avoid arguing with a Mexican, you should probably avoid these three topics. Religion, politics, and soccer. I've been pretty good at the first two. I haven't talked religion, haven't really talked politics, but soccer, guys. All right, so I recently made a video where I went to Club America. Which is one of three soccer teams in Mexico City. And I guess they're pretty unpopular because a lot of people have been giving me like... <laughs> Just check the comments of that video if you want to see what I mean. They are very passionately against Club America. You know, there's the passion in the good way. There's the passion uh, that can get you in trouble if you're not careful. But overall, Mexicans are just passionate, proud people. And actually that connects to my last point, which is that, guys, guys, if you love Mexico, Mexicans will love you back. And I know that might seem like something that could be said of any country, but I think it's especially true of Mexico because Mexico has been especially mistreated in the media and misunderstood by foreigners for a long time. So what I've learned, honestly, by making these videos for the past five months is that like Mexicans really appreciate seeing their country through a foreigner's eyes and seeing someone say that like things aren't what people say they are. This is a beautiful, rich, culturally significant country. I'm not saying like it doesn't have its problems, it does, but if you allow yourself to come with an open mind and an open heart, you will fall in love with this country. You just, how can, how can you not? There's just so much to learn in Mexico. So if you're watching this video because you're about to move here, uh, I wish you luck and um, bring an open mind and you will love Mexico. And guys, that's it. That's my list of 10 things that you should know before moving to Mexico. Um, 
I got some big news. I got to share it. So I have uh, only actually been to three states in Mexico, as we talked about before. It's freaking huge. Uh, but that's about to change. I'm going to number four, and I'm going... All right, it's going to be a bit of a surprise, but I'll give you a hint. It's somewhere a lot of people have been recommending that I go. And um, I also wanted to show you guys something. So this is actually something that was given to me. Uh, I don't typically do this, but like this company, they're a Kickstarter, they make suitcases, uh, and they have letters where you can kind of write whatever you want on your suitcase. And I just thought, I don't know, would it be cool to like roll around something that said the new travel? <laughs> I was barely able to fit travel. It took us like 30 minutes to figure out how to put that on. Chapel? Suitcases. Um, I will use that with pride. And yeah. See you next time.